Well, we are just getting going back into corn today. Today's Sunday. On Friday, this dump wagon, if you recall, in a couple of videos ago, we ended up having a wheel support on the right hand side, the weld let loose. And the uh, dump wagon ended up flopping over into the, med, uh, the black moss trailer that Jared tows with the, the Jared pulls with the, uh... well, we're just getting back into corn here. It is Sunday morning. We just switched the chopper back over from chopping hay we ended up chopping about 40 acres of hay here last night we've got hay on the ground still however the damn stuff's too slimy and we couldn't get it to go through the chopper last night so if you recall in a couple of videos ago we had an incident with a dump wagon well it was this one that happened friday afternoon jared got this fixed here last night and this is the second load that we've put on the hit so far here today since it's been fixed. We had a uh, weld break loose on the wheel assembly on that right hand side if you didn't recall from like I said a couple of videos ago. We ended up um, covering one BMR bunk here yesterday morning and then we came down here we chopped open this up then we switched over to hay and now we're back on the corn we've gotten a little bit of a rain shower here this morning made things a little greasy and we figured we would just get the dump wagons out and finish this piece off once we get into a fresh field it won't be as greasy as this one is where the corn was standing prior to uh, the rain here. Th that ground is pretty firm. We've got Andrew running the other dump wagon. We've got both 8320s on these dump carts. We've got the 8320R on this one and the older 8320 that Jared did the uh, engine on on that other um, dump cart. So we've got Lucan's full. This field here was the first field that we planted um, this year with the 16 row planter. Uh, this is a Pioneer P1449. It's a BMR variety. And we're running right around 66, 67% moisture. Now what we're doing for the first time, or what we're able to run for the first time, is climate field view here on the chopper. The climate field view works in the combine, and it works through uh, all planting and stuff like that. You're able to record your crops as you plant them, and you're able to document your yield and stuff like that and have a coverage map from the combine but now they are uh, having this work on the chopper I've only chopped 110 acres using this uh, app here on the chopper runs off the iPad there's a little Bluetooth um, device that plugs into where the ISO bus or where the uh, data port is which on this chopper it's right underneath the cup holder on the right hand side of the cab the diagnostic port that is and it gets the data from the uh, 4640 display so we're all over the place we're not really following the row the way we should but we'll have to see how things go today we're due to get rain showers here on and off throughout the day and we'll just have to see how things go. Now, I didn't show any of the swapping out and switching over to hay and then going back to corn. But basically, 
what we did is we left the kernel processor in the chopper and we just rolled it out of the way took the belts off of it we had to switch the spout because the spout is too long to do hay with and I, and I had had trouble before plugging that spout um, up on the end of it there uh, with blowing light hay through it now I had gotten some questions here in the past about why don't you just leave the kernel processor in year round well the answer to that is it's not really a good idea to do that because as you're chopping along the choppers creating a lot of vibration and the rolls on the kernel processor are not turning and being that they're not turning they're just sitting in one spot and if they're sitting in one spot uh, flat spots could develop from the vibration so that's why they don't recommend leaving the kernel processor in the chopper uh, when you're not using it guys have left it in there some guys have had problems with that some guys have not so uh, it's just one of them things that you really don't want to find out whether or not that works because <laughs> if you have a bearing go right there in the middle of harvest you might be down for half a day so we'll keep plugging away here we've got andrew just about full here and then we'll let a truck slide in we have been able to sneak a truck in here and there and I'm all over the row here so we'll keep plugging away here folks we do need to weld up the wheel assembly on this um, other dump cart before we have that one uh, break as well and then when we get time we'll have to do the ones on the left side but they're not really as critical as uh, the ones on the right so we'll keep plugging away we'll join up with you in a while here It is first thing Monday morning here and we are going to switch over to the corn knives the reason why we haven't switched to the corn knives is we had that little bit of hay to do and as it looks we're not gonna be able to do that for quite a little while and I haven't got that much of it left anyways and what I'll do is I'll just chop it with the corn knife in there so I have the shear bar removed. I've got the, the bed that the shear bar sits on. I've got that wire wheeled. I've got the, um, all the spiral band. I've got the shims removed out of that so we could drop that down. We'll have to readjust that once we get the knives and we'll show you about how that goes here in a while. So we'll take all these off, put all the corn knives on. I've got the shear bar motors removed so that I can adjust the shear bar just adjust the proper measurement from the knife drum to the shear bar they give you a couple of these tools here 
you set that on the face of the shear bar and you have this tip here come right into uh, the drum you do that on each side get the shear bar set to the drum and you can move the shear bar by hand by removing these motors and turning the adjusting rod here and that moves the shear bar in or out in the past what I have done is just walk the shear bar out walk it out away shut the chopper off get in get out keep checking going back and forth but I have knocked enough of these knives back that I don't trust that the shear bar is even from one side to the other so we want to make sure we go in and check it with the tool this time around last year was the first year I ran corn knives and um, we're gonna really be able to tell now going from corn with the grass knife to corn with a corn knife last year I started the year with a corn knife and it's kind of hard to compare the knives because it was quite a while since I had used them so we'll go ahead and get things switched out we'll show you the different steps of this process here so here is the shear bar here and the reason why we have removed it is we want to put the straighter edge against the corn knife now these shear bars are you can flip them over but you cannot they only have two sides two wearable sides to them not four I get the question I commonly get the question you know why you know how come you can't switch it multiple times well I'm pretty sure the camera will pick it up but the hardened edge is right here now this edge here I had up against the hay knife and we are starting to see some wear on this back side now this is a Duraliner shear bar this shear bar was three thousand dollars and usually one side of the shear bar lasts for one set of knives and they're about 1200 bucks if I remember right so we had this side here against the corn last year and you can see that it is just about like new and the reason why it's like new is because there hasn't been any stones against this side the hay is quite a bit more abrasive than uh, the corn now I also get the question oh you just take that to a machine shop and they'll go ahead and make you one of them and they can even harden it for you well the reason why this whole edge this whole bar is not hardened and only just this part is because if this bar was all hardened material it would actually break because it would be too um, too rigid so as far as having somebody else make one of these if you guys own a chopper and you want to have somebody go ahead and make you one at a machine shop you go right ahead so I think we'll just run what's supposed to be in there so uh, this has run for two and a half set of knives here and um, we'll probably flip this out after uh, first cutting uh, next year at least uh, just flip this over to this side here and then put a new one in at uh, corn time so for those of you that run these choppers the Duraliner shear bar is well worth the money
Well, now we have the shear bar set right where it needs to be. We've got the motors uh, back on there. We'll go ahead and remove all of the old knives. I haven't decided whether or not I'm even going to put these on again, judging by how much hard face material is left there. I'll probably just throw them out because you should put a new set of bolts on when you use these bolts because they are used. Uh, the bolt has already yielded. It has already stretched itself out. So once you go in on the torque setting that you need to be on it, they're actually not going to stay tight and they will start loosening up. And that is a lot of the reason why we had some trouble with knocking knives back i used new bolts but when i adjusted the knives i did not replace the bolts and i should have uh, done that but um we should notice a little better of a cut you can see some of these knives are rounded off a little bit they had been sharpened quite a bit but just being that they are not quite true to themselves this one at one time must have been knocked back and then went through a day and it's wore itself out here uh, they will wear out more they wear out faster if they're not adjusted up to uh, the shear bar here now the the main thing that wears your knives out is actually sharpening them but you'll dull the knife by cutting the material by chopping the material so you need to sharpen them and when you sharpen them you're taking a little bit off every time after you sharpen you adjust the shear bar in so that it creates a tight cut this knife just barely nicks this shear bar so that's why we had to move it out it had moved itself in to compensate for the war knife so we'll get everything plucked off and then we'll go ahead and put the knives on that were on here last year i've got them in the pail here and then we've got boxes of new bolts here as well well we've got all the knives removed now we just got to start putting in the uh, corn knives now I am gonna throw these out because they're just not worth using again um, I have run them down past this point before and I've told myself that once they get to about a quarter of the edge to a third of the edge left it is best just to throw them out so the the amount of material that's left on these knives is not worth spending the money on putting the bolts in now this here is a 40 knife uh, drum and then these knives are slotted so that you can adjust them to the shear bar but they're also slotted so that in the event that a stone comes in if you run uh, recommended torque then torque spec for the bolt these knives can just get bumped back in the event that it hits an obstruction so we'll go ahead and get the knives in and once we get them all in we'll have to torque them but when we put the knife in we'll put them in as close to this cutting edge as we can get and then what we'll have to do once we get them all in is we'll run the sharpened stone over them a few times set the shear bar and then we can get going we'll also have to adjust the spiral band so that the knife is as close as possible to it and we'll also have to raise the sharpening stone up because the knife is a lot higher than what it was previously so we'll uh join up with you in a while well we've got this job done knives are installed they're all torqued sharpened stone has been moved up and we adjusted the spiral band so that we were just barely uh, skimming the bottom of the knives now we'll get this closed up run the sharpening stone over it a few times 
and then we'll set the shear bar and then we can roll out here. Well, we're just getting opened up here pretty good. It's sprinkled and drizzled rain all the way over here. We're on the Cleverleaf farm now. We're at the furthest farm away from home, and this is the longest haul. We have some other trucks that are gonna be helping us. We've got another Moss trailer right down there. And that is Newton's uh, outfit there. It has a uh, Mack truck pulling a red uh, Moss trailer. So we've got four uh, Moss trailers on um, the job here right now helping us. We also have the Olek trailer hooked to the green Mack. So we'll see if we can get a glimpse of uh, Zach Newton's trailer. I haven't seen it yet. Man, yeah, we'll be able to see him pull out here anyways. I don't even know what Mac, what model Mac that is. Yeah. That's a nice setup right there. Nice looking unit. I think that trailer there is a 36 footer. I think it's two foot shorter than um, ours. But at any rate, we're gonna keep her lit here. We'll have to use dump wagons for a little while until things dry out a little bit and then we'll be able to uh, drive along beside. So the knives have made a big difference in the efficiency and the um, all the, the speed in which I'm able to uh, chop here. It's uh, running through the chop. The corn's running through the chopper a lot easier. And it's actually doing a little better job uh, chopping too. We were starting to get some long leaves coming through. And I believe that was from the uh, some of them knives that had the rounded edges to them. So we'll keep plugging away here. And we'll join up with you in a little while here. Well, I told you guys we would uh, touch base with you once we had an event. Well, we had one, but it's just a minor one. We blew a fan belt and we're waiting for Jared to bring over some replacements. This is a doubled up B72. We've got a couple at the shop, but they're just a pair of singles. There isn't anything else wrong. There's not a bad pulley or anything, but we just have to wait for him to get over here. This belt was new the beginning of the season. So I would have thought it would have lasted longer than this, but it, it did not. So we'll have to wait for Jared to get over here. Right, Nate, you were the ones that put these belts on in the field last year. So. I think we put them on without touching that tensioner though. You rolled them on last year, I think. I don't think we had any tools with us. Let me see if I can reach in there and hold that down on that pulley. I don't know if I can reach, I can't reach it from here. Now, hold up a second. You got to roll that one off. 
Take take that one off. Well, first. this one's got to be on gotta, the inside. It's you're going on the end. No, you got it. Hold up a minute. Pull that off the fan. All right, put this one on the inside of the fan. Hold on a second. Put this one on the inside of the fan. Go right over the pulley. No, go right over the top of that pulley, Nate. Fall, let it fall over it. Hey, let me call you right back, Kyle. All right. Now, take, take that one, Nate that other one to have it fall off the front of the pulley Nate have it fall off fall off that way there you go will it fall off or no it won't okay won't fit between the damn uh... alright well it's just loose enough that should go now. These are two different sizes. Oh, yeah, all right. Okay. All right. He's got them on there. Get those uh, ratchet Tighten them up, and then we'll be rolling here. It didn't overheat. No, I was getting um, increased intake manifold pr uh, temperature. I thought the rotary screen belt broke, and I was watching the temperature, it wasn't even halfway, and then by the time I got out in the open, I wasn't chopping nothing. How's that? Do you I have a blown tire on something? No. What's Kyle coming for? He's coming to reload that tire on the dump wagon. Oh. That, uh, did he get all oh, his so stuff? Keep going? I don't know. Is there an indicator there? There's no marks on it. Oh, we might be a little too tight, but how is it? Feels good. This one seems looser. <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll be good. We got some new ones coming. Jam them nuts together. All right, that's gonna wrap up this job. Boy, what a pain in the butt. Just put this on there, right? Yeah, I'll take those uh, wrenches. Sounds like he's making it. <laughs> All right, we should be good to go. Well, we'll fire up here. Hopefully all our little dumb bells and whistles go off. Engine fall, intake manifold, temperature high. That's all right. That's just got to cool for a second. Just got to let it run for a second here, and then we will be able to get going.
just had to run it wide open for a little bit of a second. That code cleared out. So we can get fired up here. Had me worried there for a little bit of a second. Thought we had something else going on. I got an alert here on my iPad. Op Center, Red ECU, blah, blah, blah. So everybody that's in our uh, John Deere Operations Center, they're getting that text message as well. So. And there we go. We'll give her. yards away and we have seen that albino deer a couple of times so far being over here on this farm here in Warner's unless there's more than one I don't know there's another deer out there with it right to its left running with it. Maybe there's two other deer. One. Yeah, just went into the corn. Well, I guess that will about do it for this video. Been using the dump wagon all day. We have I uh, loaded a couple of trucks direct here, but for the most part, everything has been going on the dump wagon. And then the trucks are just getting closer and closer to where the chopper is. The dump wagons haven't got to go that far. But to be honest with you, we need a third dump wagon in order for everything to keep up nicely here so that is gonna do it for this video they're trying to round that moss trailer up that'll have three dumps on it when they get done and then we've been putting about a dump and a half on the uh straight truck so i've got another half a load or so to chop here and then we'll get back on this here tomorrow. So we will catch you at the next one. Chopper has made a big difference by putting the actual corn knife in it. 
I didn't think they made that much of a difference, but it's it's a lot easier to tell the difference between the two knives when you go from one knife on one day and then the following day you end up changing the knives. So lesson learned there. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you at the next one.